Mr. Governor. The meeting tonight is for the conduct of town business by the town board. The public is invited to participate at the items marked on the agenda public comment. During that segment of the meeting, if you have a question or comment for the supervisor, please raise your hand and wait to be acknowledged. Please state your full name and limit your remarks to three minutes. Thank you for your anticipated cooperation. Thank you. So again, this is the first meeting of the month. Uh, December 12th, 2022. It's going to be the only meeting of the month this uh, month. The 26th meeting has been canceled. Uh, and we voted on that at last meeting. So please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And please remain standing for a moment of silence for all those men and women who gave their lives to give us this opportunity to serve our country, our state, and of course our town. Thank you. <coughs> Chair almost got away from you, huh? Almost, Eddie, almost. I would have caught you, don't worry. All right, I need a motion to approve the agenda. I make the motion to approve the agenda. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. All right, so moved. I need a motion to approve the November 28th town board meeting minutes. I'll make the, uh, a motion to approve uh, the town minutes. Town board meeting. Need a second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. Aye, so moved. Uh, authorization of bills of $619,008.74. I need a motion to pay the bills. I'll make the motion to pay the bills. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Is there any comments on the agenda from anybody? Any comments? Okay. We're going to go on the reports. Uh, okay, supervisor's report. I have a long report, but instead of the report, because this is the year-end report, this is what we've done through the whole year. Some of the uh, people in the audience uh, from our departments and our board may have uh, heard me talk about this, but we're going to do a little slideshow tonight. And it's going to show you kind of from the beginning of the year, and then at the end I have some extra stuff. but. Uh, See if I can make this full screen. It is up there. You have it. Mm -hmm. From the beginning, right? Yeah, but it was, it was showing full screen for them. Oh, it was? Okay, yeah, good. Was. All right, good. All right, so this is what, uh, you know, from the beginning of the year, we started off, our big focus obviously was completing the pier and completing uh, and starting Tom back. So they're a big part of it, but. So Tom Beck, again, our highway department, our water department, um, did a great job renovating and um, uh, demolitioning all the work inside of the Tom Beck building to save us about $300,000 in savings. We brought down uh, Senator Skoufis and Assemblyman Jacobson to show them what their uh, dollars that they gave the town is going to start um, building back up. They were very impressed with what the guys did. A couple of pictures of the inside of them ripping out the ceilings. He took down walls. And then we decided we were going to um, increase the size of the building with a 65 by 30 um, addition for the recreational side of the building. Um, this kind of almost doubles the space of the town uh, recreation center. So uh, the guys stepped in again, and they just and we decided to do this in house and we did this foundation in-house. So this is some of the pictures of them putting it together. Putting all the rocks in, getting it tampered down. So there's a lot of work that went in, was involved and a lot of work that our guys did. And I can't say enough of how much work they did for us to save the taxpayers money. Uh, they did an unbelievable job. 
So I'm so proud to be able to show these pictures. Uh, again, then we had to get everything out of the Tomvac building and we had to put it into our, our highway department building. So we took the old supervisor's office, the old clerk's office, and we re-renovated them to make storage. And again, the highway department took on this challenge in the middle of the winter <clears throat> when they had time and they actually built these spaces for us to store everything. And then we also renovated our office spaces because uh, one thing I stated to all our employees when we first uh, started this year was to have respect in your surroundings. Uh, we're going to have a lot of people come into our offices this year and I want our offices to look respectful to everybody around. So we did and they came out great and I can't tell you and I want to thank um, Maple Tree Cabinetry for donating all the cabinets to us and uh, it came out really good. That's one, but the other offices were painted up too. The highway guys put in the floating pier in the beginning of the year. They took it out at the end of the year to put it in back. So they did this in-house again, saving us money. We had our inspections, our weld inspections done at the pier that were never done. Um, so we could get our certification and CO. Um, they did finally pass. Um, our engineer signed off on it and our building department gave us the CO. So that was good. Uh, one of the fires I attended this year, unfortunately, a lost house that was being renovated. And if you all don't know, most of our highway department and our water department guys all work in, uh, for the fire department too. So most of them were on scene and Gary uh, had to utilize our John Deere to take down the remainder house. So. Um, before Bayside started up there, a uh, bunch of us took a tour up to Camp Young. And we were trying to see if there was anything in there we could salvage wood-wise. Uh, Deputy Supervisor Appler wanted to see if there was any posts and beams we could use to build the pavilion up at uh, Sands Avenue Park. Uh, unfortunately, this wasn't a post in uh, beam building. It was just a conventional construction. So. There was nothing much wearily we could save in this building, but it was a historic building and it was uh, pretty cool to actually tour it. And unfortunately it has been taken down. Uh, this year we hired our third sergeant and uh, talking to our chief of police and the other sergeants, uh, we found that the A-line was lacking supervisor um, position. And we believe the sergeant position was something that um, this board what we should do and Mike was next in line for the promotion so he did receive that promotion. Our recreation committee stepped it up a notch this year. They had a lot of great events. The first one of the year was the Easter hunt that we held up at the um, Dome that the Pisa family donates every year so thanks to them, thanks to the rec committee. Sands Avenue Park we finished up and continued the work putting in water lines and trees and blacktop and it finally came to look like this. As you can see, the grass was coming in great and then you could see it started to get to be the 100 degree weather <laughs> and it kind of uh, died out. But uh, the local 17 installed some benching by the dog park this year in memory of Fred Butwell who was a dog lover who unfortunately passed away this year and who was a local 17 operator so that was nice of them in memory of Fred. Again, Charlie and Dave planned the, the uh, beautification of the Marble Hamlet. We started our walkway. The highway guys in the water department, uh, I asked them to make the ball fields a little bigger to get us the dimensions of Young's Park. And we're looking to have uh, tournaments in the future. And so these fields were in really, really rough shape. And once again, they stepped up we have the equipment and they, they made them uh, look really, really nice and came out really good. Uh, we had a great, great meeting with Senator Scoofus and his assistant. We actually had a little barbecue that day when he came. Um, he was very impressed with what we've been doing. Unfortunately, we, we lost him to another district this year, but I already talked to Michelle Hinchy 
uh, had a one-on-one -on -one with her, FaceTime with her, and she will be coming down here uh, probably springtime, and we'll be going over all the projects that we're going to be doing next year with her. Again, these are some of the pictures of the, everybody having a good time that day. And then it's the famous fish floating event in Round Pond. I don't know if anybody noticed this, but we lost, what was it, day 45 carp that day. Uh, they all of a sudden started to pop to the uh, surface. It came to be that the oxygen level in the pond was down to, what was it, Charlie? Like three, something like that. Three percent, it should be like 15 percent, 10 percent. So the carp being as big as they could, they couldn't breathe and they popped up. And that's why, if you notice, we put in those, uh, it looks like just a water fountain, but it's not really a fountain, it's also an aerator. So we're trying to aerate the water which will oxygenize the, uh, the water and hopefully we don't see this happen again. So again, the highway guys got the job to do that. <laughs> we had a great Memorial Day parade this year. I think uh, everybody coming out of COVID 100% this year, it seemed. Um, there was a lot of participation and a lot of crowds. So we had a great day. Our uh, camp was another unbelievable year of camp. Thank you to Tina Rosa, my secretary who gets this all prepared with the county. Um, three directors this year they did a great job. They had a, um, a theme week every week. Uh, seemed like the kids had a great time. I got a lot, a lot of um, uh, phone calls about how great the camp was this year. So hats off to them. And the concerts in the park this year were a huge success. Uh, the Recreation Committee stepped it up a notch this year. Um, Vinnie Pomerico, who booked all the bands and all the ladies who took care of uh, the concessions and making sure we had food trucks this year. And it just, we advertised it like crazy and the weather just happened to be perfect this year for us. So we had a really, really successful concerts in the park this year and these are the people that are our recreational committee who pulled all this off and uh, they did an awesome job and again they uh, introduced food trucks this year which I think was a huge success when we had Coven's Maine Lobster there we had over a thousand people right chief there uh, it was really really packed but it was all under control and everybody had a great time so of course, we've had our black topping starting this year. The guys do their annual black topping. Uh, we pick roads every year that need to be repaired and updated. And this way, we don't have to take out one huge bond every year. We use our chip money, the money that we budget for, and we do X amount of miles a year based on what we have in our budget. And again, the guys stepped up and did a great job. We had our uh, uh, anniversary parade for the Marlboro Fire Department this year. Um, I don't know if you guys were able to attend, but it was a great event, not just Marlboro, Milton, there was all different fire departments that attended this uh, parade, uh, saw a lot of um, awesome vehicles. I know me, uh, Councilman Couchy and Councilwoman Sesha were up on the grandstand and we got great view of all the uh, different uh, men and women marching and all the different uh, apparatus that the fire departments use to uh, protect us every day. Uh, this is just one of many different accidents that occurred throughout the town, 9W especially, and again, our first responders usually are our highway department, fire departments, or police departments, um, and just showing you one of the events that they uh, came to rescue this lady, smashed into a telephone pole and flipped her car up, and thankfully she was all right, but. They were right on the scene, I think, within two minutes. Um, this is the first of our uh, North Pier fire. Um, guys were on the scene right away. It was a very small fire. Uh, the New Hamburg Fire Rescue came over, uh, sprayed underneath the decking for us to make sure that we didn't have any flames pop back up throughout the night, and they didn't until about two weeks later. Uh, then here's our fountains that we put in. Again, this is for aeration. And since we were doing it, we, uh, we actually got
got some LED lights to make it look at nice uh, at night. And I think they look great. And Gary and the guys did that. We finally got cable going into the park. We got uh, Wi-Fi now. We got camera systems, security systems, and thanks to Chief Kokoza, Gary Lazaroff, um, and uh, we took care of this. And we did that in all our parks this year, just so you know. We have cameras in every one of our parks now. Those cameras are fed back to the police station, so we are uh, keeping an eye on our parks. Uh, I'm sure a bunch of you uh, remember this day. We had the main water main break in the hamlet. The whole town pretty much lost water. Uh, it was probably about, what, 20 hours, Charlie? 18 hours, maybe? It was a long day. Um, but these guys got it done. They found where the leak was. Uh, they repaired it, patched it up, filled it back up, blacktop. Um, they did have to go back a couple other times for some other little leaks there, but uh, in, that, in that one area is uh, a troublesome corner. Uh, this was the second fire at the North Pier, a little bigger than the first pier fire. Um, this is because it was a little more windier that day. Again, our guys actually, the uh, Milton Fire Department got there within... I don't know, Gail, what, probably five minutes? Just because you were coming back on a call. I just happened to be lucky. Um, this one did a lot more significant damage. The Poughkeepsie uh, Fire Rescue came over for uh, this one to help us. Uh, we have our claim into Traveler's Insurance. Um, we did receive, we're probably going to receive for damages about $125,000, $130,000 in damages. I just received a letter as of yesterday, that we will receive the coverage to make it ADA compliant. That means we'll probably get another 125000 to do that. So that way we could actually put a, um, probably the aluminum plank that we have like on the other pier, and that'll match and it'll be wider and everybody could walk with two people on there. So we'll make it, we'll make it work. So just to give you an idea what the pier used to look like um, prior to the ships coming in. So this is what the landing was looking like. Uh, cinder blocks coming down the hill. Um, all the um, shrubbery that was overgrown. Things were left on the ground. Uh, I asked Councilman Zambito if he could help us out. I got some donations of riprap rock. I got some donations from... Dame Manisi to haul the rock. And I, I tell you, this is one of the biggest transformations of the year for me. It came out really, really nice. And you'll see, it's pretty cool to see the, uh, the transformation. And there's Councilman Zambito donating his time. And you can see how nice the landing came out. And the rip rack serves two purposes. Um, you know, it looks nice, I believe and it actually holds back uh, erosion on the waterfront. So I could tell you every ship that came in said they'd never been at a nicer pier. So, and uh, these guys travel all over the country. So you could see Dave did a great job. So thanks, Dave. And Dave's been up 24 hours, so he's a little tired. <laughs> okay, so then we... Uh, Finally got to start the walkway, going down to the train station. Uh, Consorti Brothers had won this bid actually at the end of last year. It took them almost the whole year to actually complete this. Supply chain issues, heat problems, uh, you name it. I got, the, I got a lot of excuses on why it wasn't done, but it did actually end up getting done. And it came out uh, pretty nice. So. I mean, there's still some things we got to finish there at, at the park area. I think, again, along the stream bed, we're going to look at putting some riprap in there for erosion issues and aesthetics. There's trees that we're going to be putting in because we put in for grants uh, for some more uh, trees and shrubbery. Clean up around that edge a little. But for this year, it came out pretty good. And the grass finally grew in. Then we had to put in uh, the bumper systems for the ships being prepared for the ships to come in. We had to remove the floating dock. 
the guys actually uh, redid the brackets on the dock so we could actually push the floating dock into the pier a little more so that when the boats came in, it wasn't in the way. For some reason, when they designed this originally, it was two feet sticking out off the pier. Uh, and we wanted to make sure that the boats uh, didn't hit it, so we had to redo the brackets, and the guys did that in-house. Um, we were able to get these bumper systems in temporarily this year. From Randy, he's the person who actually helped build the original pier. He helped us out. The guys went up and got it. Um, we put in some signage for people, and then um, Deputy Supervisor Appler helped build these gates. And... Uh, we install them on the pier, so this is where they come off the gangplank. So uh, there's a lot, a lot of work down at this pier this year. I mean, a lot. Um, so Mike, I asked Mike, hey, do you want some overtime? And he goes, yeah, and then he didn't realize what I was asking him to do. But he spent a couple days building this little walkway. You'd think it's pretty easy, but it was hard, hard work because it was solid, almost solid rock down there. Uh, and then. We used Millings to pack it in, and it came out really, really nice. Um, again, this spring we'll probably come in with topsoil. Uh, we're, we're getting some topsoil donated to us, and we'll be planting some grass there along that edge until we start fi finalizing the park, and hopefully we'll start that this year. But there was a lot of work down at this pier this year. Having said that, Charlie and the water department installed uh, fresh water uh, piping all the way out to the pier. Um, this was paid for by American Cruise Line. It was part of our contract agreement that they would pay for this, and they do, and they actually have a meter on it, and they pay for water when they use it. And this is how long, it, and it comes all the way out to the pier, and there's a little lock box here, and that's how the, the captain or the maintenance guy on the ship actually has the key to it, and they can hook up and get their water, and then we bill them for it. And then, of course, this year we had our ships come in. Uh, big contract I signed uh, with the permission of the board was with American Cruise Line. And that contract can technically be up to 30 years. Um, in 30 years, if uh, they come through on all their payments, they'll pay paying the town about $1.2 million uh, for our revenue. And that happens to be the actual bond that we have on the pier is $1.2 million. So there's no coincidence there that when I worked out this deal, those were the numbers I was trying to get to, and they actually came through. Now, they could actually even book more bookings here if everything keeps the work out, so that number could even go up. Next year, for 2023, you're going to see the same ships, the same itinerary, because they do these two years in advance, but they are currently finishing up. They're building two brand-new ships just to do these uh, Hudson River tours. So in 2024, you'll see new ships coming up and down the Hudson. Uh, here was the opening ceremony day, the first ship that showed up. So we had a nice little ceremony down there. A lot of people showed up. All the people that helped get this pier and this uh, project to where it is today, everybody was there. So we had a little ribbon cutting ceremony. The uh, captain cut the, the ribbon. This Eric Del So is the, uh, the head of American Cruise Line. He was there. And all our guys were there. Previous board members were there who had a lot to do with this also. So uh, we invited everybody that was involved. Then we got lucky. We were able to go onto the ship and tour the captain's quarters which I thought was pretty cool. They showed us how it worked. Um, it's pretty, pretty cool. And there's Captain uh, Gary in the seat. So uh, it was pretty cool. Then we had our second uh, ship come in, uh, which is the National Geographic Sea Lion, which is Libland uh, Cruises. And again, you know, BJ McDickelson from Meet Me in Marlboro had a lot to do with, especially this one coming in here. Um, these, this ship is more of a, they do a lot more local tours, so we're pushing to get even more local tours, but um, every time they touch our pier, we get $1,000. So, uh, you know, it's, it's good revenue for us. It helps us maintain the pier, helps us pay off the bonds, so that way we don't have to tax the taxpayers. So we probably charge more than anybody on the Hudson River, 
But like I told all our employees, that's because we have the nicest pier on the Hudson River. So they pay it and uh, our guys maintain it. So here's just another picture of them. And then with that ship, um, they have to have somebody come around, unfortunately. And <laughs> this ship, I just took this picture for fun because this is the ship that takes out all the wastewater and stuff from their ship. But uh, Randy actually does that. Again, the, the gentleman that helped build the pier. So and there they are getting water. Uh, also this year, the, we finally repaved the park. Uh, the park had a lot of potholes, a lot of uh, rip-ups. Uh, uh, it was in really bad shape. So uh, the highway department came in with um, uh, our normal black topping crew and they did a great job here. So we did a significant amount of work here. Uh, and they did this all in the, about three days or so, but it came out really good, something that we needed. We had our uh, annual community day held by the PBA. They hosted for us. Um, got a lot of volunteers from the PBA, the fire department, our town employees, our, our uh, town board. We have the sheriff's department come down. We have all kinds of great things going on. Uh, our highway department shows off all their equipment. They stayed there the whole time. Uh, we have really nice equipment and we show it off and show the taxpayers what they pay for. Our guys keep their equipment in great shape. So that way when we do sell it and get rid of it, we do get top dollar for our our machines. Uh, a lot of employees helping out cooking, handing out uh, information about building and assessment and all different things. So this is a way for us to celebrate ourselves and show our uh, citizens what we do, but also for our citizens to come down and ask questions of us if they, ha if they need to. Uh, Brick Malazzo was able to get the helicopter down here for us and Jerry was having fun over there. I pulled him out of the cockpit for a minute to grab a picture. So, and of course, Kurt is our DARE officer. Uh, he does a great job. He was there uh, talking about DARE and all the things that it does. Our fire department was there. Um, so again, everybody participated in Community Day. It was a great event. There was, you know, everything's free to the public. Popcorn, cotton candy, hamburgers, hot dogs the slides, the bouncy houses, all donated. Uh, this was the day I actually signed the contract to start the uh, Town Community Recreation Center at Tomback. So we did uh, take some pictures of this because I, me, this is a huge moment um, for this town. This, this has been sitting about 15 years. Uh, so that was the day we signed the contracts and then this was the day we started building so if you go by now, you'll see that the roof's on. Starting to build the other dormer. Again, it's coming along pretty good. The weather's hitting us now, so. We have the inside. A lot of people haven't seen the inside, but got it out like this. This is for preparation for all the piping, for the new bathrooms, the drainage. There's a grease uh, line that has to go in all the way from the kitchen. So this was all dug up, cut out, and go out to the outside. The uh, building's going to be insulated. Uh, never, it was just basically the brick building, but new codes state that it has to have an R value of a higher value. So it's got to be framed out and insulated, which they're doing. Putting a little eave over the, each edge, the north and the south edge. There'll be some lighting underneath that. It's, um, it's going to be like a nice little touch on the building to make it look a little different. This day I got to go up in the little um, uh, machine up onto the roof. We had to uh, inspect the roof because they wanted us to replace the entire roof sheathing. We didn't believe it needed to. And I had Deputy Supervisor Appler come up with me uh, and Gary Lazaroff and our engineer and as we thought certain sheets needed to be replaced, but not all of them. So this way we're not uh, spending an extra $20,000 on sheathing. And we got to check out the cupola on the top. So these guys doing a lot of work. 
Uh, this is where they were putting in the, the septic uh, line, putting brand new septic lines out to the tank and the grease trap lines. And again, our guys are doing a lot of that in-house. This is when they were putting the trusses on that day. And this is all boarded up now, so. Uh, we finally put in the ADA compliant railing on the pier. Uh, it took us all year to get it done, but we actually finally got it done, so that uh, made my, the building department very happy. So that's completed also. Then we had to take out the floating pier for the season, and uh, we're not put, uh, storing it down at the Marble Yacht Club like we did in the past. Uh, we're able to uh, do it right on our shoreline. The highway department guys actually built this contraption to be able to pull this out of the water and do it with our machine, and again, saving us thousands of dollars by doing this. So uh, the Milton Fire Department donated us this uh, boat this year, and we're utilizing that when we have to move the pier. So it helps us out. To f uh, finish up on our parks, we actually uh, put in the fencing up at the Cluett Shands Park. This was on top of all the field work that the guys did. Now we have three fields, these two fields plus Young's field that are all the same dimensions, and that way uh, we could start having tournaments probably next year. The goal is next year to probably hopefully build a shed up here and some hopefully build some dugouts. We had a nice uh, Veterans Day affair with the county, had a luncheon down at the Legion Hall. Uh, I think that was a great day. It's always great to say thanks to our veterans. Uh, God, these guys had a great event again. The Recreation Committee, I don't know if you were there, most of you, but a lot of great trunk or treaters this year, a lot of great trunks, a lot of great costumes, and we happen to have a great day too. So, um, another great event by our Rec Committee. And we had, I don't want to say a thousand, but I felt like a thousand people there. But there was a lot of great trunks. This little guy won the, the Headless Horseman, won the best costume. <laughs> But you could see, he was pretty Love good, him. right, Sharon? He was great, that kid. Um, but you could see there's a lot of people there. It was great. We, this year we switched it up. We brought it into the park because we felt that we were going to have a lot of people. And we're trying to switch it up, maybe Marlboro Milton each year, but we'll see. Um, I thought the park worked out yeah, pretty good, great. though, this year. We had our Veterans Day um, memorial. Uh, Tom Schroeder couldn't be there that year, but Joe was there. And I know for some of you that were there, Joe had a little, little hard time with his speech, but he, he got through it. He dropped all his papers and got lost in his little speech. But, like but he did a good job. <laughs> he did a good job. And uh, we, me and, uh, and our legislator, Corcoran, also had some words to say, but it was a great day. Uh, we served 250 seniors this year in our community. Uh, we did this jointly with the Lions Club. Uh, we sponsored it um, through our um, uh, recreational side, and they pretty much put it all together for us, and we helped serve it. But um, seniors were very appreciative, and you know some of these seniors unfortunately don't have a Thanksgiving, so for some of them this was their Thanksgiving. So it was a great event. Uh, we started building our pavilion up at the Sand Avenue Dog Park. Again, doing it in-house, uh, led by Deputy Supervisor Appler. If everybody doesn't know by now, that's what he does for a living, so uh, it works out really well. Uh, did the foundation work. It's right on rock, so that's pretty good, because that's solid rock underneath that dirt. There's not much uh, dirt there, it's all rock. That's a Marlboro. And then uh, started building the actual pavilion which was pretty cool. It's like, what do you kind of timber do you call that, Gail? It's like just rough old timber, like rough cut hemlock, yeah. So it's thick, old cut thim, uh, hemlock wood, and it looks really, really good. Uh, again, the highway department's made this jig thing to be able to pick up these, uh, you know, I call them like... Uh, what do you call those things? Trusses that we kind of built on the ground. And uh, again, they, they can make anything out of anything, these guys. 
These guys got me up there screwing in nails, and it was a pretty good day. And then Gail came back the next day, and underneath there is going to be all, t it's all tongue and groove pine underneath. Then he put the sheathing on top, and then we're going to put a metal roof on top of that. But when you look from underneath, it'll all look like uh, pine, so it looks really, really nice. Um, it, fits, it fits us, it fits the town, it fits the park. Then I asked the guys, hey, can you guys dig a hole for me up at Tomback because we've got to put this big grease trap in. And I was like, how hard can it be to dig a hole? Well, of course, what are we hitting, Marlboro? Solid rock. So something that should have took like maybe an hour and a half took about eight to nine hours. And we actually went six feet down of solid rock. Thank God we have the equipment in the house and these guys did it, but you can't just dig a simple hole in Marlboro. <laughs> uh, then we were able to do our, my favorite thing of the year. We actually went out and got our three Christmas trees for the town at Split Rail Nursery, the Manor Family Farms. Uh, they donate um, half of the, uh, one of the trees and we get the other two. So they do donate. They used to donate them all, but we understand with uh, inflation and everything going on. And they have a business, so, but they do donate. And uh, we were able to get it every year. We go up with the highway department, and Harry cuts down the tree. He's a professional tree cutter. Does a great job. You can see we get oh by that. You see we get the trees that are like 25 feet tall, but the bottoms are all. Gone. But actually, they're probably some of the best trees. So it works out good. Um, and then we put them at all our different spots, and then. The Recreation Committee, along with the Milton Hamlet Association, had the first tree lighting. Um, that was down in Milton a couple, uh, what is it, a week ago? Yeah. Mm -hmm. About a week ago now. Um, it was a great event. Santa Claus came, the Milton Firehouse came, Vivian did a great job with her snow machine, kids had a good time. And then following that event, we had our second ceremony, which was the blue light ceremony uh, put on by Officer Fulton. And this is to thank all our officers, but especially those that have fallen in the line of duty. And this year, 207 of those officers passed away or um, were killed in the line of duty. So if you're out in the foyer, when you leave today, you'll see the white tree with the blue lights on it. And on there, there's 207 ornaments representing each one of those men or women that died this year in the line of service. So great job by Kurt, as always. And then in the middle, these were the three trees. We have another one down at our highway department that they decorated. So kind of that's some of the stuff we did this year. Some other things we did also, we did multiple updates to our code. We updated our definition of the bed and breakfast and short-term rental. We did multiple changes to Section 155 zoning, updated our employee handbook, updated our emergency management plan. This year, met with every single first responder, fire department person, chiefs, highway department, police department, county, and we updated this plan. Uh, we hired a new EMS ambulance provider 24-7 service for ALS coverage. I noticed it was a big change for our town and I commend the board for sticking through this and doing all the hard work of um, going through this. And again, we didn't just do this blindly. We got a lot of um, feedback from our first responders that actually are the ones who brought this to our attention to do this. Um, and we had multiple meetings with them, our county representatives, and we did sign that contract last week. So on January 1st at 12 a.m., we will have a new ambulance provider 24-7, which people don't realize we only had 15 hours of coverage prior. And the other eight hours, um, nine hours, right, were covered by Highland or Newburgh had to come in. So we had 30, 35-minute waits. So hopefully that's not the case anymore. Again, we hired the new police sergeant. Uh, we worked very hard with the Bayside developers this year, Baxter and Rieger, so they could start their building of their 104 condo development, the Hamlet of Milton. Uh, it's the Hamlet of Marlboro, sure. not Mar Milton. Um, and you guys see that project going on by the uh, middle school. 
but uh, originally those they wanted a pilot agreement uh, me and the uh, school superintendent met three times with them to push back on this and uh, they finally understood that they weren't going to get our support and they need our support in order to do that and we work with them on their assessments and, and different things and uh, they were able to start this project. So um, work with the latent properties to help close the deal on the dockside development. So this is the um, development, they're gonna build 100 townhouses uh, off of Dock Road in the Hamlet of Marlboro. Again, this person came into this town on a wine tour. He fell in love with this town. He went down next week to Mr. DeMarco and said, where can I buy some property? and next week he was in negotiations to buy this property. So he feels like we are a diamond in the rough that no one knows about, and he wants to get in before everybody starts finding out about us. So uh, he's gonna be building 100 townhouses, and I just did finalize a reservation agreement that in the beginning of next year, our board is gonna have the opportunity to vote on with them that they're gonna be giving us $609,000 towards our sewer district upgrade. Um, that's double what the Bayside project's given us. So that's extremely, um, extremely good for us. So they're gonna need a 35,000 gallons per day reservation capacity. We're gonna expand our sewer plant for 50,000. So we're gonna have extra space. We confirmed in commitment of the Young's Field to be donated to the, to the town. Again, we stole, installed safety cameras throughout all our parks. We've made extremely great progress with the CSX uh, railroad company and moving forward on building our crossing. We're right there. I have one more agreement to finalize with them and then we'll, they'll start building our crossing. And the agreement, just so you know, is a maintenance agreement. And what we won't agree to as a board is they want $17,000 a year plus 3% every year thereafter forever to maintain their crossing. And we're like, no. You can maintain your own stuff and we'll maintain our own stuff and everybody's happy. So this is where we're stuck at, but uh, we'll get through it, we'll get through it. Um, and we completed three quarters of the removal of all the tires at the transfer station and we have to get this done by the end of next year. So uh, I wanna thank the highway department and Larry, uh, who's our head of our uh, transfer station for getting this done. Some of the grants that we've been working off of, a lot of these, uh, some of these came from the last administration and worked into this year, and I had to finalize a bunch of them. Uh, you know, we, they tell you that you get awarded, but then there's a whole slew of paperwork that still goes with it after the fact. So um, we finalized these. We got the LWRP grant. And again, this is $2.3 million in grants. It was 560000 We got the Tomback uh, Assemblyman grants, and these were from... Uh, Senator Skoufis, Senator Jacobson, and of course, Assemblyman Frank Scartatos, who passed away, um, but we're, he's still given to our town, right? So we got $800,000 toward Tom's back. The Milton Land and Pier, this, was the one, this took a long time, but we finally got this check for $313,000 in September. Uh, the train station parkway, uh, station park walkway, grant we got from the historic preservation grant was $24,549. That's towards the walkway. Cultural resource survey historic properties. This was phase two. We got $10,000 for that. Ulster County recovery and resilience municipal sewer and water grant. So I'm going to read that tonight, but I want to thank, um, you know, the county and of course, Tom Corcoran who, uh, brought this to our attention for me to apply for this, and we got $500,000 towards our sewer plant um, from the county. So again, with the 609,000 we're getting from Dockside and the 500,000 we're getting for this, and the monies we have ourselves, there's not gonna be any money that the taxpayer has to pay to upgrade this sewer plant. So thank you, Tom. Uh, the adaptive kayak launch, so we haven't got this put in yet, but we've met a bunch of times down there. We've got designs, uh, and this was a $40,000 grant to do this. Uh, we're planning along the 9W corridor grant was 35, uh, planting I should say, and these were the trees that you see planted, and Dave helped, uh, put all those trees in for us, and that was a $3,500 grant, and the Milton Landed Park Sands Avenue, 
ecological restoration grant we put in for $67,050, and that's gonna upgrade um, uh, down at the Milton Pier Park and also at the Sands Avenue Park. For 2023, what do we look forward to? We're gonna complete our community recreation center, we're gonna expand our sewer plant, we're gonna hopefully complete our crossing, we're gonna install ADA compliant kayak launch, install a permanent bumper system on the south piers, we're gonna install a pavement block in the parking lot at the train station, we're gonna install new lighting at the Milton and, and uh, Landing Park Pier, we're gonna install new trees and landscape, Sands Avenue Park and the train station park, we're gonna have a next amp is gonna build a 2.0 megawatt solar farm at our transfer station. We're gonna complete walking paths around the Sands Avenue Park, complete all remaining work at the Milton Landing Park, fencing, landscaping, ADA walkway, blacktop parking, lighting, sidewalks, all that goes into that. We're gonna rebuild our North Pier and make it ADA compliant. We're gonna build storage shed at the dugouts at the baseball fields at the park. We're gonna work on a plan to to fund the lighting install at Young Park and our town baseball fields. We wanna uh, have lights for this so we could actually, again, when we do these um, tournaments, that we could actually do them at night if we need to. Um, renovate the do uh, we're gonna renovate the donated three-bay garage at Sands Avenue Park, and that was donated by the King family. We're in the works of uh, getting that all completed, but we wanna thank them. Uh, work on a plan and funding to build the bathrooms at the Milton sewer plant. So we want to have permanent bathrooms off that sewer plant. So when the people come off the ships and people are down there, they actually have a bath, public bathroom they could use. Right now we've been renting outhouses, uh, which isn't too nice. And our big one that we're going to start working on is work on a plan for renovating 1650, our highway department building. Um, we already, the board already approved engineering to start on this and they already have started on this. Um, again, if people don't realize it, when you ask senators and assemblymen and different people for money, you gotta have a plan ready to go. If you don't have a plan ready to go, you're not gonna get the money. So this board is smart enough to realize that and we approved money to get engineering done and we're gonna get uh, some plans ready in, uh, as soon as I meet Michelle Hinchy, I hope to have them right in her hand. So <laughs> I'm gonna hope to get some money from her and Senator Jacob, um, Assemblyman Jacobson already said he would definitely help out once we get the plan. And then we'll talk to whoever else we could get money from. But we're going to try to do this without expending too much money of the taxpayer dollars. Uh, grants that I have already applied for this year, I restored funding grant for Milton Hamlet Building Restoration Initiative. This is a $2 million grant that I applied for. And this is going to help out some of the projects that Mr. Pollock is doing down there for different locations, 10 Main Street, 12 Main Street, 39 Main Street, and 9 Dock Road. These are, this grant is uh, specifically for Main Street projects. I could also apply for a $2 million grant for the Mil uh, Marlboro Hamlet, which I will. Um, I just gotta get those businesses and those people that want these uh, restorations done on their buildings to actually buy into it. This is a really, really good grant. Um, they will pay, um, $2 million towards these projects. So, and you only have to put 10% of your own money. So it's a really, really good grant. I think uh, it's a high likelihood that we might get that $2 million grant. So for Milton, because again, why? Because Mr. Pollock has the plans in hand and he's ready to go. So it might actually work out, but that's a $9.3 million projects on those four projects for him. Uh, Economic Development, New York State Homes and Community Renewal Grant. Again, this is a $750,000 grant. And this is for the expansion of Buttermilk Falls, the restaurant, Henry's, and that project is $3.9 million and it will create up to 69 jobs. So we did apply for that grant and we've tried for a CFA planning grant, which I'll was $100,000, I'll, I'll read that letter tonight. We did get 50,000 towards that as of today. And this is for planning for, um, it's like uh, studies for traffic studies and parking and things like that, pollution. Um, and this is in preparation for, uh, again, Mr. Pollock wants to put in uh, this uh, resort. Okay, this resort could be anywhere from 40 to $50 million resort overlooking the Hudson River. He's got 85 acres now along the Hudson River and he's looking to put this resort in. So 
um, have what you say about Mr. Pollock, but he's invested in our town. So if there's grants out there that we could help him continue and complete these projects, we're going to apply for them. So, and again, if anybody in the Marlboro Hamlet, uh, we could get on board, we're going to apply for another $2 million grant. So any grant that's out there, we're looking. We're looking and we'll apply. So I just want to say thank you to all our heads of the department, all our employees, my board. I couldn't have asked for a better year for my first year to be supervisor. It's great to have people that you work with that actually have the same vision and work ethic as you. And I think we're doing some great work. So I just want to thank everybody. So that's a long-winded end of the year report. And uh, it'll be online. And also we have just the written version online of all the different projects too. So all right. Now we'll get into build an inspector report, Tom. All right, you got my slideshow there? I got it. <laughs> Monthly end report, November 22, building department. Certificate of occupancy, two. Request for information, eight. Building extensions, 11. Fire inspections, nine. Stop work orders, one. Order to remedy, six. Complaints, 23. Burn permits, 15. Building permits, three additions, 15 burn permits, two carports, one commercial uh, permit, three decks, one demo, four electrical, two furnaces, one mobile home, one pool, one roof, one shed, two single families, one, two solars, one tank installation, one wood pellet stove. Total permits 41, estimated cost of building $2,428,395. Monthly income, certificate of occupancy 300, permit extensions 2905, building permits 110470 request for information 1600 uh, for total uh, fees for the month, $16,269.70. Total gas use is 91 gallons, total miles, 1451. Any questions for Tom? Yeah, no? Tom. You got uh, one, man? You had a stop work order. May I ask, what was that for? The, the property on 9W, as you head north on the left side, all the excavation they've done there. Okay, thank you. Yeah, he pushed it too much. Yep, he pushed it a little too far. It's yep. Not only did I put a stop worker on, our, on him, but uh, Central Hudson also contacted me because he, uh, he worked too much in there right away. They were right away back there on those electric lines. So Central Hudson and I have been working together this past month on shutting him down. Yeah, boy. You don't want to get on their bad side. And uh, footing inspections tomorrow for the, uh, for the Bayside project. Oh, really? Right. Thank you, Tom. Good. Moving along. Thanks, Tom. Jerry, Police Department report. Activity summary for the month of November 2022. Personal injury auto accidents, nine. Fatal, zero. Property damage, 25. For total, 34 for the month. Summons is issued vehicle and traffic, 100. Zero parking violations. Complaint activity, bladder entries, 830. With a total of 19 arrests. Telephone calls handled for the month, 1,875. Uh, Full-time dispatch overtime, 60 hours. Part-time dispatcher overtime, 26 hours. Police mileage for the month, 9,649 miles with a fuel consumption of 900, I'm sorry, 926.217 gallons. Uh, for the month, we didn't have <clears throat> any use of force or civilian complaints. Well, that's a good thing. Yeah. And you didn't hit any deers. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have hit six so far this year. Not us. Uh, uh, all right. Any questions for Jerry, guys? Thank you. Thank you for another great year, Thank Jerry. You, I'll go through all this here. Do, 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 do. All right. Next one is the superintendent of highways. Councilwoman Sesha, you want to read this one? Sure. Monthly report for November 2022. The beginning of the month, we assisted Debella Seal Coating and the WD blacktopping sections of Grand Street, 3rd Street, Highland Avenue, Platakill Road, and Hudson Terrace due to repairs needed from the water main breaks. 
We spent several days mowing and clearing brush in the numerous town-owned drainage districts. We also mowed the town's reservoir. We continued to replace the old street signs on the roads that were paved this year with new ones that display the town's seal. Throughout the month we prepared for the winter season, we began our removal of leaves and debris in all the ditch lines and catch basins. On 11-15, we sent out three trucks to pre-treat the roads due to a forecast of freezing rain that night. My son was very upset that we didn't get any school delay thanks to the amazing road maintenance. On 11-17, we replaced 30 feet by 12-inch ADS pipe to a driveway at Mulberry Lane and Willow Tree Road. We continued working on several of the town projects. We spread gravel at Tomback for the new sidewalk. We removed the dock from the pier along with the bumpers for the winter season. We also removed the railing at the train station freight dock so that the dock could be replaced with new lumber. Fuel usage was gas 113.473 gallons and diesel 629.273 gallons. Respectfully submitted John Alonji, Highway Superintendent. Thank you. John has one of the best signatures. <laughs> All right. Water Superintendent Charlie Majel. See, Charlie, she has it. Danielle's sick, but she's still got it in there. Good evening. <clears throat> Good evening. Um, monthly report for November our water consumption totaled 15 million gallons, 840,000. 884,000, which is a daily usage of 529,466. Uh, compared to last month, our total was 17,226,000, which is a daily usage of 555,677 a day. Compared to a year ago, we had 16,079,000 thousand gallons, which is a daily usage of 535,966 per day. Billing, we went over, bills went out this month. We had to alleviate some calls about bills. If there's any problems with the bills, feel free to give us a call. Curb boxes, we had to repair two curb boxes on Ridge Road, hydrants. We started installing snow markers and had to drain hydrants for the winter season. Meters, we had to replace six meters because of uh, battery starting to fail. This is our Orion system, which we installed in 2007 and 2008, so it's on its way out. Mm -hmm. The reservoir, we mowed and cut brush at the reservoir with the help of the highway department. Service lines, we had to repair a service line at 71 Orange Street. The town park, we cleaned and winterized the pavilion bathrooms and the par at the park. Water mains, we had to repair and rebuild a pressure reducing valve in Milton. Sewer service line inspections, we had two. Closings, we had nine. Markouts, 35. Gallons of gas, 200. Gallons of diesel fuel, 30 gallons. And the mileage for the month, 1,500. Thank you. You have any questions? Yeah. Charlie, why do you think the month of October we had a million and a half more gallons than we did last year? And, I mean, last uh, this November. Well, I mean, the October. Is, uh, in uh, October is 31 days. Oh, okay. So we're averaging about a half a million more a day. Uh, okay. You can see that's one group, but you're saying. Uh, okay. Well, that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> And Charlie, this year we got to probably start talking to Badger about the meters. We've been pushing this off for about five years now. So. Well, I definitely need a new uh, receiver that um, could read both the digital and analog. Yep. Yeah. The, uh, the problem with that is, is um, cool. when it communicates with our billing system. Yeah, I mean, we have to. Yeah, I have a few things system. with our software this year. <clears throat> this is, and this system here is one of the. Ones we got to look into because it's been on our radar for five years, uh, but it's getting really old and it's out of date. And I think uh, they're not supporting it anymore after this year. No. So uh, we're going to have to look into a new system. Thank you. But thank you. Thanks, Charlie. Thank you, John. Town Clerk's Office. Town Clerk, monthly report for November 2022. 
Burn permits one for $75, conservation 15 for $86.94, dog licenses 12 for a total of $60, order services one for $200, punch cards 30 for $2,875, marriage licenses two for $35, Building department fees, one for $47,222.55. Fire fees, one for $555. Accident reports, 15 for $80. Certified copies, eight for $430. For requests, three for $2. Minor sales, one for $80. For a grand total of $51,701.49. Any questions, board? I also want to let everybody know that property tax time is happening January 1st. If you don't happen to receive your bill, just give me a, our office a call and we'll help you out with that. And also transfer station permits are going to be increased by a dollar a punch and all fees will be increased. So plan accordingly. So the increase. If everything is going up. Yes. Like, uh, thank you. All right. Wastewater treatment plant. Who wants that? You want to read that one? Yeah, I'll read it. Go ahead, man. Okay, water quality management, uh, December 6th uh, for the month of November. Both uh, the Marlboro and the Milton wastewater treatment plants complied with uh, all of the SPDES uh, requirements. The following are monthly statistics for both plants. Marlboro, WWTP, average daily, daily flow, 98,000 gallons per day, about 56% of design capacity. The average BOD removal, 99%. The average suspended solid removal, uh, 96%. Milton, uh, WWTP, Average da uh, daily flow, 28,000 gallons per day, about 51% of design capacity. Average BOD removal, 93%. Average uh, suspended solid removals, 92%. Uh, both the marble and the Milton treatment plants operated uh, normally during the month of November without any major change or events. Uh, we are all, we are still waiting on the electrician to wire up the EQ pump for Milton facility. Uh, the Excelsior uh, blowers determined that the broken blower at the Milton cannot be fixed and needs replacement. They fortunately have one in stock and are scheduled to come on the 16th of this month. We are currently operating with just one. Overall, both wastewater treatment plants are in good working order, but are getting older. If we need any additional information, please do not hesitate to contact me. Thank you, Julian Falco. Wastewater Thank you. quality management. Thank you. Yep, they're getting older just like us. The town of Marlboro Dog Control. Eddie, you wanna read this? I don't have it. Town of Marlboro Dog Control, Andrew McKee, Dog, uh, dog Control Officer, Bethany Sorry. McKee, Deputy Dog Control Officer, Thursday, December 1st, 2022, November 2022, monthly report. Monthly report, 11 1 2022 through 11 30 2022. We received a total of 15 calls this month, including three calls to service from the Marlboro Police, New York State Police, or Ulster County Sheriff. Responded to three active complaints and or cases which are now closed or resolved. We currently have one open case or complaint. We impounded zero dogs this month. Zero appearance tickets were issued this month. There were no dog bites reported this month. We have no dangerous dog cases in progress in the Marlboro Justice Court. We have a number of calls for dogs running loose this month. Please keep your dogs tethered or otherwise physically contained on your property. Residents and visitors should be able to walk on public roads without stray dogs approaching them. Thank you and Merry Christmas to all and the report. Thank you. All right, planning board. Hmm. 
We didn't get one from the assessor. Nope. Know. We did not, Eddie. Mark it down. Oh, it's marked. Uh, November 22nd, application fees $3,600. November uh, escrow fees $5,173.33. Uh, recreation fees zero. Uh, October, November invoices $9,461.52. Meeting November 7th uh, was canceled. Next deadline was Friday, November 11th. Next scheduled meeting was Monday, November 21st, 2022. The meeting on November 21st, 2022, attendees were Steve Clark, Cindy Lanzetta, James Garofalo, Steve Jennison, Joe Farrell, Bob Tronsolito. Agenda approval of stenographer minutes for 10-17-22. Approval for the above minutes was granted unanimously. Top C landscape design, 1943 Route 9W Milton preliminary site plan. At uh, the September, uh, the uh, 17th of October 22 planning board meeting, the applicant was requested to provide an updated narrative and clarify the use consistent with uses allowed in the HD zoning district. The project was previously approved and is back for reapproval as the approvals have lapsed. The board discussed previsions for sidewalks within the DOT right away and hours of operation on site. The application received conditional approval via unanimous vote. Chris Noto, Orange Street 33-35 Orange Street Marlboro Sketch Subdivision. The proposed project is a four lot subdivision with one existing and two proposed two family homes and one single family structure proposed. Review of the short EAF by engineering Pat Hines identifies the project area as containing national or state registered historic place as well as potential uh, archaeological site. The board should vote unanimously to declare the intent for lead agency and submit the project to the New York State Office of Park and Recreation Historic Preservation. The board also discussed the grading plan prepared for the site as well as lot ownership. The proposed project will require a stormwater pollution prevention plan and coverage under the New York State DEC stormwater SPEDES permit. Engineer Pat Hines also recommended the bulk table be revisited with actual setbacks rather than greater than symbols. The highway superintendent's comments on driveway location should be received. Details for the connections to the water and sewer should be provided at future plans. Uh, the board also discussed the sidewalks as recommended by the Safe Routes to School documentation. A public hearing for the project was scheduled for December 19th, 2022's meeting. Sarinsky East Side 191 Ridge Road Marlboro Sketch Subdivision. The project is, is proposed a three lot subdivision and a lot combination. The applicant requested a waiver of the surveying of the 21.7 plus or minus parcel A which the board unanimously agreed to. Engineer Pat Hines recommended that the labeling of the parcel A be relocated on the plan to identify within the existing boundaries of parcel A. The board also discussed and the required agricultural buffers depicted on the plan. The board requested future plans to identify driveway locations with site distance approval from the highway su superintendent for driveway locations with site distances. Subsurface sanitary sewer disposal system, house locations, well locations should be depicted on the future submissions. Dance Camber House, 3 King Street, 5 West Street, Marble Sketch Lot Line. The project proposes the transfer of 174 square feet of property between the adjoining parcels to allow for the construction of a 26 foot high garage structure on lot 14. A public hearing is required as one of the lots is in the C1 zone and does not qualify for the ex expedited review process. The project was previously before the board for a home occupation bed and breakfast use. The project is now before the board for a lot line change. The existing lot lines are depicted on the center line of West Street. Engineer Pat Hines suggested the applicant address the requirement for offers of dedication for portions of the lot within the, the town maintained roadway and sidewalk. Conceptual site plan discussion with engineer. The Rock 1582 Route 9W Marble Sketch Site Plan. Board member Steve Clark recused himself from the discussion of this application. The applicant completed a conceptual preliminary site plan application and discussed their plans for hosting on-site events 
such as wedding events, parties, and photography. The board and engineer Pat Hines agreed the applicant should complete a site plan application and recommend a survey engineer be retained to assist in the process. Next deadline, Friday, November 25th, 2022. Next scheduled meeting, Monday, December 5th, 2022. Respectfully submitted, Chris Brand, Chairman of the Marlboro Planning Board. All right. While you're going through some of that stuff, I do have, have a question for the Chief. Sure. Chief, Church Street, okay, because I know with the new things coming up, it's going to get tighter and tighter. There's no parking on Church Street on the road itself because you can't fit two cars by. And, and there's 10 cars when I go home every night and I got to swerve in. If someone's coming the other way, there's going to be an accident. I mean, it's just going to happen. I mean, the driveways they're not using, too. Oh, I agree. I don't disagree. They're all clogged with whatever. Right. I agree, and that's what we told them. Uh, but absolutely, we're going to do that. Well, the biggest thing is I'm concerned with the projects going down at the bottom of the hill there, and the people park right along that all the time. Now, once those houses are there, they're not going to be able to park there. That's going to cause a further problem. And, and, and I just see it every day when I would go home. If you don't go behind a car and then wait till the other guy goes past, you, you're not going to get up the road. In essence, makes it a one-lane road. Yeah, that's basically what it is. I mean, I understand I'm on a dead end. I'm used to it one-lane road. That's as big as it is. But that's a main thoroughfare goes all the way up. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. So now we're into report of committees and recreation committee. Councilwoman Sessa? Yeah. Are you working? Okay, so the recreation Faulty equipment. So the rec committee had two very busy weekends in a row with the town of the hamlet of Milton tree lighting a week ago Sunday and then yesterday the first Polar Express event which is a movie event the rec committee launched this fall. Um, both were very, very well received and very well attended. The tree lighting was excellent as always. Um, and then the Polar Express event was a brand new event, so the, the team was very excited about that one. Uh, they licensed a showing of the Polar Express movie and then took advantage of the Milton train station to actually show that for the kids for a holiday event. Um, it was the first time the rec committee has ever charged for an event, um, so we were a little uh, trepidatious, I guess you could say, on how that would go over. But given the very limited capacity of the space, um, it was something that they needed to do to kind of manage expectations and make sure we had the right size crowd in the building. So it went very well. Um, there were overall, I think, 77 tickets that were sold for the event. And then we did have some fall off the day of just because of the snow yesterday. But it was actually so sweet. It was incredibly magical with the snow falling outside and the trains coming by and the kids watching the movie. So. I think that it all went very well. All the feedback that we heard was excellent. Um, and I just want to give a, a special thanks and a, a shout out to the Recreation Committee because it's a lot of work to pull together all of the events that they've done this year. Yesterday, for example, they were on site at the building at 8 o'clock in the morning and didn't leave till after 4, 4 o'clock, and that was two, two Sundays in a row, in addition to all the time spent on the the trunk or treat and all of the concerts over the summer. So it, it truly is a labor of love and that group has done an amazing job this year. Uh, that said, they are taking tomorrow night off from the standard monthly meeting and we'll pick up again in January. <laughs> that, taking off, taking off. So 77 tickets were sold. That's, so what did you do? Did you have like seats or bring your own sleeping bag? <laughs> yes, it was both actually. We did set up probably 20, 15 to 20 chairs that are that we have in the train station and then we did tell all the kids to bring pillows and blankets for floor seating. So there was a nice mix. Some of the, you know, some of the people that weren't quite as mobile took okay. advantage of the chairs. Some people brought their own setups, but the kids were all cozy up on the ground in their pajamas with their hot chocolate and their popcorn watching the movie. That's fantastic. Good job. Yeah, it was really they did a great job. And she didn't tell you that they all wore pajamas, too. So <laughs> they got into the spirit. They were all matching pajamas. Uh, the kids wore their pajamas. And, you know, part of the 
you know, your ticket sale that was inclusive of the popcorn and the hot chocolate. They all got a bell. So it was a, a really good event. And, you, you know, I wasn't at first in favor of charging, but I think in charging was the best route to go because it controlled how many people we would actually have in that space because we don't have sure. as much space. And it worked out well. And, of course, you know, Councilwoman Sesha didn't tell you that uh, when you show these events, you have to actually get a license agreement, and there's a charge for that. And she took care of all that, so she didn't give herself props for doing that and setting up all the um, donations, I mean, the money where it has to go and working with Chris and getting it all. So, again, it was the first time we've ever done this, and I think it actually ended up working out great. So good job by you guys. I mean, it was a great year. So awesome. Uh, the Emergency Management Preparedness Committees, again, I, like I spoke in my... Uh, Supervisor's report, we did a lot of work on this year, especially uh, Tina Rosa and my deputy supervisor, Appler. And we also got a lot of help from Mike and Everett up at the county. Uh, they helped us out a lot. And of course, we had multiple meetings with our fire departments, um, our police departments, our building departments, um, our highway departments. Everybody got involved in this this year. Uh, I was told by the fire departments the first time they were actually ever asked to participate, so that was pretty nice. So, uh, but anyway, it was actually really good, and we got a lot of good advice from the county, especially because there's a lot of stuff that was out of date, um, and uh, it'll be on our uh, reorg meeting uh, coming up in January. Uh, the CAC committee. Uh, we could probably jump right to you guys. I know you've been waiting a long time, so... If the CAC committee, if Mickey, if you are, are coming up or if you all want to come up. Uh, and so the board knows we had an email um, distributed to us by Mickey about um, passing a resolution. And this is so we can become the smart city climate town, right? So. Thank you very much. I asked Mickey to come here and give a little talk and have the board be able to ask questions. So go ahead, Mickey. Well, thank you very much for allowing me to speak. Um, we had a meeting last week, which um, that's the report that I emailed to everybody. Um, the intention of the meeting was to get assigned roles to the people who were volunteering for the CAC. We didn't have a good turnout, so I don't have any names to give to you for those particular roles. But I do want to tell you that um, the people who were there are very qualified to help us with this whole project. And some of them are here in the audience. I'll introduce them in a minute. But um, I just want to stress to the board that um, the role that we want to be accomplishing this year for the CAC, the primary role, I should say, is to become a climate smart community. Um, we talked about this at the last meeting, and I gave the board um, some paperwork with a lot of links um, that connect to the DEC, to the community smart movement in Ulster County, um, to other agencies throughout this um, county and state that would help us become a climate smart community. And um, I'm kind of in a catch-22 situation here because I can't really take advantage of all the expertise that's available to us Ooh. without being called a climate, without be, you adopting us as a climate smart community. So I totally appreciate that you don't have enough information to actually do that. And I also totally appreciate that the very first resolution I gave you was so wordy, even I hardly understood it. So um, <laughs> I think this is the one here, but so this I was gave, the more wordy um, one. I have a new one, mm -hmm. very simplified. Today I tried to make sure that the wording on this one would be acceptable um, within the Climate Smart community agencies to be accepted. Um, the board members did not get a copy of that, only Scott, because I don't want to take up a lot of time. You're probably not going to want to vote on a resolution tonight anyway. That being said, um, I do have a lot of confidence that we have sufficient manpower to begin the climate smart community process. Um, and as I said before, we can actually go ahead strong on that. We do need a resolution. But once we are named a climate smart community, we'll be allowed to interact with all the neighboring townships in Ulster County 
as well as there are some in Dutchess and Orange County. And we'll be able to inter interact with all of the state and county agencies that will help us. Um, I wanted to take a minute to introduce Nassim Hadoui. He's a college student. Come on up, Nassim. Um, he is new to our committee, but um, he's going to be one of several very valuable assets. And he's involved with a project with college. So, Nassim, why don't you explain what you're doing? I will be doing an internship where I'll be collaborating with neighboring towns, excuse me, um, such as Gardner and New Paltz, to attend all of their uh, conservation advisory committee meetings as well as their CSC meetings. I will also be attending uh, county level meetings with the DEC and the EMG, I believe, or EMC. Um, to get a better understanding of how the program works as well as I will be researching um, past actions and concurrent actions that other uh, municipalities are working on um, to be able to bring those here and implement them hopefully. Oh, that's pretty good. So I know the biggest question you're having right now is like what are we talking about? What <laughs> kind of projects? So I found it very very interesting in your wonderful um, really wonderful slideshow of how much the town has already done and where you want to go. Um, I noticed in particular that having the infrastructure, first of all, having the properties available to us was the beginning of all of these projects that you have been bringing to completion and it's so wonderful. Um, and I also see how much infrastructure you actually need to continue to get grants, et cetera, et cetera. So one of the very, very real um, goals of, the concert, of a climate smart community is to help lay the infrastructure for the grant opportunities that you're trying to get. Um, I thought that all of the grants that you want that you are applying for could certainly use some of the expertise that's available through the climate smart communities that we could be actually working with the board on your behalf with your cooperation and with your representatives to help Mr. Pollock get his grants, um, to help the town get information about the sewer expansions, about any kind of um, zoning changes that you might find would actually be helping you to comply with some of the other things that the state grants are expecting of you. Um, the way I did word the new, the new um, proposed resolution uh, I just want to read this quickly so that you understand. Whereas the town of Marlborough recognizes the advantages of cooperating as well as collaborating with county and state offices and agencies as a way to improve services to the citizens of Marlborough, ease the increased cost of energy used throughout town facilities, and improve the quality of life for our workers and residents. And whereas participation as a climate smart community will allow the town to access those services that are available. And whereas it is understood that participation as a climate smart community has a potential of new grant opportunities to the town, and whereas particip participation as a climate smart community is voluntary and can be pursued, postponed, or discontinued according to the wishes of the board and the degrees of success that you witness. So it's a much simplified resolution. I don't expect you to be voting on that tonight, but. I want you to understand that I'm very much aware of you need to know what you're getting into. That being said, um, I would ask Janelle Kazarek perhaps to come up because uh, she is much more in tune with um, the environmental issues as well as already having gone to a couple of climate smart community meetings. And I, heard, I watched her taking copious notes as to what we could be doing. I believe that's what she was doing anyway. Um, there are so many things that the town has already talked about that we could be helping. So maybe Janelle has something to add about that. Sure. Um, so I'm Janelle Kazarek. I am very new to Marlboro. Um, I've met Scott once yep. and Rita. Nice, nice to see you all again. Uh, so I moved in June of this year. So I have to say that that was, this is a perfect board meeting to come to to see everything that's happening and also what I'm going to be doing for the rest of the, the coming year. Um, also, I've been to the dog park just two weeks ago because I have a new foster dog. Um, and I have been to uh, the walkway now down that was just built and the pier and the dock and it's incredible. So I'm really happy to be here as a resident. 
Um, so the climate smart communities, these are the resolutions that are mandated in order for the, the town to, to decide we want to become a climate smart community. So there is, um, in the state of New York, there's currently 368 towns that are registered as a climate smart community. A uh, hundred of them are actually certified. So there's a lot of towns within the state of New York that are working on this, um, these initiatives, and the initiatives are different for each town based on what makes sense for their own town. Um, there's a lot of areas that we could look to um, in climate smart initiatives that makes sense for us or that we're already doing. Um, another point to know is past work could be filed for um, certification or for points towards certification. So it's not just ongoing product projects, it's past work that's been done. Um, of the communities, like I said, 100 are certified, so 268 are in process. And there are thir like about 3,300 projects that are ongoing with communities in the state of New York. In Ulster County, there's seven communities that are registered. Um, six of them are bronze certified and one are silver. So our neighbors in Ulster County are very, um, very effective. So we have some good people to look to for advice, guidance, and projects that they've done, where they have wins, where they have failures, so we don't repeat the same mistakes. Um, the solar uh, panel initiative is a huge one that is, I believe, that like minutes from being up and running, right? Uh, it should have been on today's agenda to pass some stuff, but legal reasons yeah. they're not, but yeah. But it's very close. I mean, that <laughs> initiative is already happening, and that is a uh, high, is something that we could just apply for, potentially get more grant money towards, and it's 20 points towards certification. So that project alone that's already in the works. So you, we get more money as a community? Potentially, and, and we so as a, <laughs> right, exactly. get money as a community come in and get a solar company come in and build the solar farm? Is that what well, so this work, it depends on how we look at it, and there's a lot of areas to work towards for points. There's native pollinator habitats, there's energy usage, uh, we're doing an audit on the government buildings to see where our energy pitfalls are and how we can improve. So there's really a wide, wide range of areas that we as a committee and you all on board can say this is where we want to focus our efforts. Um, but that project in particular that's already happened with, this, with the solar array is something that we could put in for uh, points towards our certification and then, and then use that to receive further grant money going forward, whether that's for a new project or that's grant money for a project that's existing, that the work has already been done. So further grant money for that, maybe for maintenance or uh, to, to expand the project. Um, but there, can you give me like a, I'm like trying to wrap my mind around sure. like a, a, an example of these programs. I mean, we're, you're just talking so general. Can you like, yeah. just give a few examples. I'm not, yeah. I mean, just we'll look at something real small scale. Yeah, like, yeah just wrap um, my mind into something. Yeah, you're talking about putting in trees and uh, plants down by the walkway, the, the dock, right? In the riparian zones down by, by the pier. So potentially, if we put in a pollinator habitat, so native plants as opposed to non-native plants, that could go towards a pollinator habitat, and that could then go towards uh, points towards certification, which then could go for grant money from the Department of Conservation, or um, even uh, the Horticultural Society offers grants for these types of pollinator habitats. So it's just about making, okay, you have this project going on, this existing project, how can we look at it from the lens of uh, sustainability and conservation or um, reducing you know, our, em our emissions? So if we look at projects from that lens, so if you and the board say, hey, we have this going on, the CAC, can you look at this from a sustainability lens based on these resolutions, and see if you can make some uh, recommendations for how we could do this more economically and more environmentally sound. We can make some recommendations, we could seek grant money to further the project that the board already wants to do, and then potentially pay for things that we already have in the works. Does that help? And that would be like a small scale, like just plantings, the trees and the pollinators. Then the bigger scale project would be um, if we wanted to do an audit of the government building's energy use. 
and that's one that's highly recommended from the state of New York as far as being a climate smart community because that's where you find out where our emissions are going and how we can save money and save emissions uh, by making us more energy efficient in our government buildings. So that's another bigger type of project that would be under the climate smart communities. First of all, welcome to our town. Hey, thanks. Uh, mm -hmm. Secondly, what if uh, are you familiar with local law 97 that's happening in Manhattan by any chance? I'm not. So I came from overseas, so I'm get familiarizing myself with the, okay. the local laws. No, yeah, that will be a, another conversation for another Sounds time. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And trust me, she's highly educated. <laughs> <laughs> Very educated. Thank you. Yeah, I'm a, I have an undergrad in environmental sustainability and I have my MBA from Temple University. I'm from Philly originally. Mm. I like that town. Yeah, it's a good I town. Know, I, I, don't like I know the Eagles, Eagles are doing really well this year. So you guys could be mad at me today. <laughs> if they lose tomorrow, you'll turn on them. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that is true. I had to ask you a question. So, so I would just like to say that um, once again, we could be a, a real connector for the town, just making connections. So as Janelle has already mentioned, so many of the things that the town has already done. I mean, I look back at when I was way back when, or when Scott was on the board and you did the lighting, the lighting thing and you switched everything to LED lighting. There's a potential that just that action alone could help us towards our certification. I don't know that um, because we've only had two meetings and we only are excited about knowing that we want to do this work. Um, and we can only do the work once the board passes the resolution. Yeah, I mean, we've done a lot of, of, um, ton of climate stuff. smart acts. I mean, like, you know, a all the street lights, we've already changed over to LED. Right. Every building, like, we'll talk about, did we do a sustainable, but like, the school district did that study on every building already. <coughs> this building included, we did the one on the highway department building already. We did it on Tomback, actually, originally. Right. Um, so yeah. we've done a lot of these things. You know, the solar farm is going in. We're looking into putting solar at, at Tom back eventually too. Just right now, the cost is you know not in the in the ball game right for that to do that. But, but if if but, before you get all of your plans done for the highway building, for example, yep. that could be a really big project that we could help work on, knowing what you've already done, making any more recommendations that we yeah. might find from other neighboring towns who've already done the same thing before you actually yeah. start construction. So. I mean, I find it very exciting that there are so many things that the town is doing right now. Well, not knowingly we've done things, right? That's the thing. Is that not knowingly we've done these things, well, but we've, you know, right. we've done them. I hope everybody looks at your slide a show. Um, that, that's a really wonderful thing to show all the progress that's being made and that will be made for the town's people. Well, when the, everybody gets mad when I take pictures all year, but this is why I took them <laughs> so we could actually <laughs> see what we do. Because sometimes at the end of the year, you don't realize what you did. But a picture's worth a thousand words, right? So when you put it all together, and we did put it on our website and uh, gonna go on Facebook. So people will be able to hopefully look at it and then come and ask questions if they have questions. You know, that's, that's what this is about. Right. We have these meetings. It's good to actually see people here tonight. So that's good. So I, I know there was a, you know, a couple of these things, like I think you, know, you said the 10 bullet points that I have up are hard line items, right? And, I, you know, I just want to make sure that, like, I think some of the board members and myself, you know, you get a little worried that we're, like, locking ourselves into something that maybe we can't get out of or we're setting up a future board that they can't get out of. So some of the wording that you put in so in the beginning was actually good, like, as far as, like, you know, saying that we, you know, that we could opt out if there, or a future Absolutely. board wants to opt out, you know, because when we talk about certain things, we look at it in a certain way, but... My, my thinking is always 10 years down the road on everything. So I'm always thinking down the road. And, <laughs> That's our goal too, but, you know, but guess what? We and are I, and I know a future board might say, you know, what are you guys crazy? You know, so. But the CAC is dependent upon having volunteers in the CAC willing to do the work. Yep. So, it, you know, one hand is going to be washing the other or one hand is going to be saying, get out of my kitchen. You know, uh, uh, that... But I'm very, very grateful that we have so many talented people. Um, Matt Sabi is also here. He's a uh, Milton resident, and he wants to help. He's got some background in real estate, commercial real estate, environmental issues. He worked for the assessor in Plattic Hill and helped. Um, yeah, you guys got a lot of good members. I mean, it, you know, right. it's hard to get people to commit to anything. So to actually get members to step up and, and want to serve right. is actually a, 
a, a great thing, you know. So, you know, like, again, I, you know, I, we just get nervous that we're, we don't want to, like, look, we all want smart and clean energy. We all want that, right? But we also don't want to lock ourselves out to what's in front of us right now, right? Yeah, you know, I we're, we're still We're still reliant, unfortunately, on fossil fuels and things of that nature. We just don't want to say we're passing something that says we can't utilize those things, right? Until I, I we get these, to that point. Yeah, I think these are just the guidelines. If you know what right. what your what your goals are, what your um, what your um, what you're directed to be doing. Once you know what your direction you're supposed to be going in, right. and those are just summaries of. We can take it to a high level, or we could just say we're a kind of smart community, and our posts on the website could be environmental in nature from the CAC, and that could be yeah. that can be an inform inspire the public. A very simple thing, number nine, and yet that's part of being a climate smart community. So it can be very, very simple or it could be very, very complicated. Um, oh yeah, I mean, like if you go to New Paltz, obviously they're extremely on the other you know, scale. Right. Like they're really, really you know, into, um, which is a good thing, right? I mean, it actually, you know, a lot of these things are good things. They save a lot of money um, for the taxpayers. We, I think some of the board members had questions, what will this cost us a lot of money to get some of these initiatives passed, right? I think so. I think that that's the, two of the things that are important there is when you are, as a town, as a board, if you choose to pass this resolution, you're not saying that we are going forward, we are never using fossil fuels. We are shifting completely to solar. It's about making the conscious effort to have the conversation and consider all options. Um, so that's why I mentioned the fact that only 100 of the 368 towns are certified yet. Right? This is a long going process that the town, the board, the community members, and the committee get to choose what makes sense going forward over a very long period of time. And I mean, I, as I said, I, I have an MBA, but my, my goal is always to save money and be sustainable because otherwise people are, are less likely, organizations, businesses, and towns can't get on board if you can't make it fiscally responsible. So the key to sustainability is to be environmentally sustainable, fiscally sustainable, and socially sustainable. So it has to work for all three areas. I have a couple of questions. Um, you mentioned that in Ulster County, seven towns. That's a small percentage of the amount of towns that are in Ulster County. If this is, you know, if this is the perfect thing, and I don't see why anybody would be against it, why has it been such a low amount of towns in Ulster County. It's, I don't know exactly when the initiative came in place, but I do know it's a fairly new initiative, and so not all towns have even really heard about the initiative yet. Um, there is a group out of Newburgh, the um, Mid-Hudson Regional Council, mm -hmm. that is available to climate, the CACs within towns to help work with, it, work with them to become climate smart communities. And so I suspect that that will ramp up within Ulster County because that that um, county uh, position has been placed for that work to happen. So we have a representative within our county that will work with towns in order to ramp that up. But that's a, those are new roles. But nobody in Ulster County is taking that initiative like they're doing in Orange County right now. No, that's what I'm saying. This isn't. This is Orange uh, County. Ulster, this is Ulster County. I'm sorry, Newburgh's you, in Orange County. You, yes. Right? So it's not in, it's, is it in Beacon? That's, that's Duchess. <laughs> You're not getting anywhere near here. <laughs> it is. In, You're getting further away. So this is Eleanor's <laughs> role. <laughs> Whatever, wherever she is, she is in her Mid-Hudson Valley and Ulster County. So, so I'm so getting the town mixed up. But where, where is the actual place? Um, so there is help within Ulster County. I don't think that Ulster County. They has don't have a thing like that is what I'm saying. Head of the Climate Smart mm -hmm. Division. There, but if you go to the Ulster County website, Climate Smart Communities is listed on there. And to answer your question about why more towns in Ulster County aren't Climate Smart Communities, mm -hmm. probably because, as Janelle said, they haven't quite heard about it. Um, probably because they don't have anybody who wants to head it up. I first heard about this over two years ago, three years ago, and I knew that I didn't have the energy or the expertise to develop this for the town, and then COVID hit, and so now 
Now we have people who are asking us to do it. So. I'm, not, I'm not arguing that point. Yeah. My, my point is, is if it, it is a good thing. Mm -hmm. And I don't understand why Elster County hasn't created something for the county itself to promote this, to do things with so this. I don't want to... I don't want to misguide you. They might actually have a, does a, lot a of PR things. person to promote this. I can't answer that. That is Eleanor's role at Mid Hudson yeah. Regional Council. Mid oh, so Eleanor, even though she's in Newburgh, that so is maybe her role. it's maybe it's multiple counties, and I'm getting the county lines confused because I'm new to here. And, mm -hmm. But that is her role, Eleanor, the and Pellet Pack is her role to help towns do this work. And so she's willing to come to our meetings to help us. She's willing to come to board meetings to ask any questions. Um, and you had asked her to come, so she's willing and already responded that she will be able to come whenever the board wants her here. So maybe I'm not getting my, maybe she's just mid Hudson. All right, now the, the other question I had was, you said six out of seven are bronze or something, mm -hmm. which means they're- There's tiers. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. When the, and the, what's the first, the other one? Bronze and then silver. So the one that's left is the six are bronze and one silver? Correct. In this county? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, plus, you got to have certain projects, right, that are actually qualified to get you those bronze right. or silver certifications. And then, right. like, I think they said you got to have a committee that's dedicated to actually yeah, that's, doing that's, the work. Yeah. And I can tell you, the county in general, I mean, I'm not going to speak for the legislator Horkram, but... I know they do a lot of initiatives for uh, climate and green energy, and uh, they're changing their vehicles all over to uh, electric, and they got electric stations all over. And so, I mean, the county itself has been doing a, a lot of work. I know uh, Pat Ryan was a huge advocate of that who started it, and I believe it's continuing. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, you're seeing more of this happen, and some of this, it's just happening um, because of projects we're just doing already because it is things that are from a technological point of view is becoming available to make things easier like you know solar energy electric cars uh, electric charging stations uh, all the things that are happening that are going to start to hopefully become more affordable you know I I would probably have an electric car if it actually was affordable and it actually looked like my truck first of instead all instead of something out of space I'm, I'm in the business yeah. I know you are <laughs> but if, if you made a truck that looked like my truck and it got and it cost the same I'd buy it tomorrow but it, I can't buy a truck that's three times the price right now but eventually like anything else I'm in the technological business myself right it all eventually starts to come down right when it becomes more usable when there's more so. charging stations available, people will think about doing that because they know they can get their battery charged instead of buying gas. It, it's, yeah. it's like it's the building the infrastructure, the, as I said before. The, the problem with the charging stations, because I am in the business, is yeah, yeah. if you're a Dodge, it you can only use worse. If you're a if Tesla, you can only use a Tesla to do it. So you could have 30 charging stations. There may be one for a Dodge mm -hmm. and one for each other product that is out there because they're not, trying to, they're not working together. Well, eventually, eventually they're going to be, it'll be, yeah. it'll work. So I just, no, wanted, not me. I just wanted to point to the second page in the handout I gave you. It's a little no. bit difficult to understand, but it does tell you the different levels of community, community, of Climate Smart Community certifications. So um, it's just something to reference. Okay. Right. One thing that I, I want to understand here, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that all of a sudden it raised my curiosity about exposure and liability. I mean, is there, I'm, I'm trying to be open with this. I mean, there Manny, is put, your mic what, what do you, put your mic up. Put your mic up. There is a. There is about exposure uh, and liability, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, is what kind of, um, is there a, no more than whatever decisions you're making to bring in a peer, bring in uh, uh, a dock, re revamp anything, put in a playground. I mean, it's all going to be the same type of exposure and liability because we're not looking to build any new infrastructure. It's just about you know, uh, adjusting or adapting to make uh, a different decision point. So what plants are we putting in? or what lighting we're putting in, or where's our energy coming from, but you're still having that energy come, so your liability is going to be. So what you're saying to me is that's a benefit, because if we're doing two guidelines, we're going to get a grant for it. Right. 
So we may get a grant. We're going to apply. It'll allow us to apply for more grants, but we're still going <laughs> off the town's guidelines. So it's still board decisions that are being made. So it's not like um, we're saying, yes, we're checking this box, and now the, the county gets to make these decisions. It's still, uh, like, decision points are still well, happening here. The decision's always at the town board level. Exactly. And, like, what they're getting at is when, when you apply for these grants and, like, you know, we've done a lot of grants now. You get points for certain things on your grants. That's how you get awarded your grants. And a lot of the new grants coming out of, especially New York State, have a lot of these climate initiative um, items in there that will give you points towards getting a grant. Obviously, the more points you get, the more chance of uh, receiving that grant. And if even getting a greater amount in the grant. So the grant could be 500,000, you might only get 100,000, but if you do some more initiatives, you might get the whole 500,000. It depends on the point system and how it's worked, but that's how grants work. It's all based on point system, um, you know, and you, and you have to really work at it. It's, it's not like it's just a given, just, you know, write up a grant and you automatically get it. There's a lot of things that go into it. So part of what they're, um, they're trying to tell us here is, as accurate is that you need certain climate initiatives um, for a township in order, to, in order to get some of these grants. So like when I, when I have uh, uh, Senator Hinchy come down here in the spring and we could tell her, you know, we're a climate smart community, that's going to go a long way with her and actually saying, oh, maybe I will give you a member item towards this renovation. If you're not, maybe they'll go to the next community that, that does. So again, that's why you pass these things. That's why you look into getting these things. It's all about hopefully trying to get more money back in your community. There's money out there at the state level that they're gonna give out to some community. They, all, they have all this kind of money. Um, you just gotta have the right people, the right wording, the right uh, input on how to get that money. So, you know, this is just another piece of the puzzle in order to help hopefully get those monies. Um, there's millions of dollars out there right now. Just makes us look more attractive <laughs> yeah. compared to other things. You know, like even the small thing, like we're, we're replacing the lights down at the Milton uh, Pier right now. That's, right. we just asked Central Hudson to do, we're changing them all over to LED, right? Because I said, we got these old fixtures here that are probably cost, and when they came back with the estimate, sure enough, right, Jerry? He said that we were paying twice as much of what we're gonna be paying when we replace them. So. It definitely, in the long run, it is a good thing. But, all right, I don't want to keep us here till 10 o'clock because Dave hasn't slept in 24 hours. Um, so we're going to keep, we're going to look over this and then probably next, you know, when we get back after the new year, we'll digest it all and go from there. And the new resolution, do we, are we going to get a copy of that? Do I got know? it. I'll send it up. I think. Yeah, I got it. Scott will send it. Yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. All right. So IT committee, uh, the only thing we got on our IT committee this, this week was uh, we're uh, talking with Barracuda. That's a, a service company that's going to hopefully um, uh, help us with our cybersecurity. Um, so Danny's working on negotiating that deal with them right now. Uh, we told them we have X amount of dollars budgeted for, and that's basically all we can afford. So we're almost there with that. Uh, Milton Train Station Foundation, I have not gotten an update from them. Milton Land and Citizens Committee, again, they uh, thank you for the, all their help in uh, the Christmas tree lighting ceremony. They did a great job. Is that the Hamlet of Milton? Which one did I say? Oh, I'm already ahead of it. I always get these confused. Yeah, the Milton Land and Citizens Committee is the one for the actual pier and down there. So there's yeah. nothing from them. Uh, Marble Hamlet Economic Development Committee, I have no report. Meet in Marlboro, I do have a report. Well, I got this today. Meet me in Marlboro, town board report. On 11-9, Tom Shorter and I went to meet Joe Kamaliga at the Latin Town School on the south end of Marlboro. Joe donated a desk from the school to be kept for historical purposes. We hope it could be put in display at the Marlboro Town Hall. This is Joe's info. This was our family home where he grew up. Uh, our grandfather bought it in, in 1941, and I have photos below. 
On Saturday, 11, 12, Meet Me in Marlboro promoted the Tino Fino grand opening of her new uh, From My Heart to Your Heart table store. Uh, Legislator Corcoran and, and Councilwoman Sesha were also there, right? So I knew it was a great ceremony. Uh, Meet Me in Marlboro hosted the ribbon cutting ceremony and welcomed Tina and her uh, exciting new store to the town of Marlboro. And again, she thanks uh, Legislator Corcoran and Sherida Councilwoman Sesha for coming to and speaking on behalf of the board and the county. On Saturday, 1119, the bi local event took place at the Marble Elementary School. It was overall success with many participating local businesses, civic and school groups, community organization, and entertainment. Uh, 1028, the Halloween Fun Newsletter was out. 12-2 and 12-9, Meet Me Marble December Newsletter. So these are all links, and we'll have this on our website. Uh, Meet Me Marble Gift Card Certificate promotion is currently taking place. Support local, give a gift that stays close to home. Meet Me in Marlboro gift certificates are available for donations, uh, uh, demolitions of $10 and $25. They make a great stocking stuffer for the holiday season. They are accepted at over 50 member businesses and help to keep our community thriving. And there's a link below, which again, we'll put on our website. So, you know, Meet Me in Marlboro had a great year again, promoting our hamlets, our businesses, our town. And here's the old school desk that they donated. So Sheila had asked me if we could somehow put this in our upstairs foyer somewhere exactly. with the. Yeah. Run that space so. up there. I got that chair. Dave, that was your chair, wasn't I got it? The <laughs> <laughs> so and this is where it was coming. It came out of. So, you know, we did uh, put the post office boxes upstairs that we've had in storage mm -hmm. for a long time. So, you know. The only thing we got to look out for is these things is they're wooden and when we get inspections the inspectors um, for whatever reason do not like anything wooden anywhere in the hallways so we'll we'll ask the school about put that in your office. Uh, yeah i'll put it in my office uh, i'll put it in my office so when you come in i'm gonna let you sit in there oh, I'll talk I, to i'm not fitting that desk <laughs> uh, okay uh so the hamlet and milton association committee there you go uh, thank you to them for ho helping host the tree lighting ceremony. They did a great job. Transfer Station Review Committee. Uh, again, we've been removing all our tires up there, and Larry calls me every other month to make sure I am on top of it. And again, we did re uh, remove three quarters of those tires. So DEC, I report to them every few months to give an update, and we'll have that done by next year. Uh, we already did our presentation, so thank you. Old business, Tom back re uh, rehabilitation update. Again, uh, right now, you see the building up there. They're actually working on some of the inside. They'll be uh, finishing the uh, one dormer off the front. Uh, then they're going to start uh, shingling the roof. Um, all the um, vents and all that are going to be placed in the back side of the building so we don't see them in the front. Um, I actually had Ray Chung in there uh, the other day. He's going to be doing the vent for the, um, for the hood. It has to go in over top of the stove. So we're starting to plan the kitchen out. Uh, and again, I've been very happy with all the work that's been going on, and they've been doing a great job. So, and uh, actually, the HVAC uh, started. They actually started putting the vents in already. Uh, some of the electrical work has started already. So. You know, they tell me they want to have this done by uh, February. If that happens, I'd be very happy that the building was um, completed by February, but uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Scott, I've gotten a fair amount of questions in the last couple of weeks about targeted completion date, and now people are definitely starting to get interested on what's, what exactly is going on the inside, I think specifically on the addition side that was previously yep. more athletic in nature. Yep. Um, so I'm just wondering what the what the best well number one what the best way is to get some kind of updates out to the community maybe we can add the completion targeted completion date to the town website or something just so people can find it a little bit easier but then secondly how firm is our plan on that recreational athletic side and do we want to start kind of taking some suggestions from the community on what they'd like to see in there what do you mean um, just a lot of people have a lot of opinions. 
Well, maybe they should have came to all the committee meetings. <laughs> oh, that I know. We had oh, I know. It's like anything else. We're very behind. So, you know, we had committee meetings for over a year. As of right now, it's going to be a recreation and a community center. No, I, I, I understand but, that. But, I mean, I if they have other ideas, yeah, come to our meeting here and suggest I them. I think they just are looking for a little more detail on what the interior is actually. Like, recreation could mean a lot of things to various people. So, just any more detail that we can provide, I think, would help alleviate some questions. Yeah, anybody that wants to do recreational activities, they can come to the board meeting and ask if we will allow it there, and then we add it to our recreational activity schedule. You know, me personally, I want to try to get batting cages back in there again, that slide out that we had before that was very successful. You know, obviously Zumba is going to go in there, boot camp is going to go well, in that, there. Well, that's what I mean. I think the um, questions are, are there going to be things in there, or are we talking an empty space that's just rentable for Zumba type thing? I think that's the sort well, of detail that people be, are trying to get into at this point. It's not going to be empty space, I could guarantee you that. But, you know, I mean, as we start to get further in the process, obviously, you know, I take a million pictures. I'll have plenty of updates that we could put on our website, our Facebook page. Um, right now it's an open space. Uh, it's gonna have that cushiony like floor that you go to a gym. That's what's gonna be in there right now. Um, it's just gonna be one big open space at this point. And then uh, we're gonna plan from there because you know, there's many, many up different things that could happen in that room. Mm -hmm. You know, it also could be set up for a secondary rental for a hall. I mean, although mm -hmm. it's gonna have a, a cushiony floor, it could actually be two rentals there at the same time. So, mm -hmm. you know, some, when I first was we were talking about it when we did this, uh, when we did the committee meetings, my envision was maybe like that side was like when they have like a, someone has a wedding because people do have weddings there. That could be like the cocktail hour side, and the reception sides on the other. You know, and then maybe like you say, 10, 15 years down the line, um, who knows? That could be the town hall at some point. So. You know, this is why we did the ex uh, expansion more so too, is like if that ever happened and we needed to have a space, now we have a space and it's big enough to house all the town facilities. So um, there's a lot of things that could happen here. And it, it's, a, it's like anything else. It's a growing, different, changing atmosphere all the time. So whatever anybody wants to do there, come bring report to the board and we'll see if we could do it, right? So I'm open. I know you guys are. So, uh, I don't have any new business unless you guys have any. I do got a few correspondence. I don't know if I read this last time, so I'm going to read it again. This was the one from the county. Um, this is from Ulster County. Dear Supervisor Corcoran, I'm pleased to inform you that after a careful review, the town application for the Ulster County Recovery and Resilience Municipal Sewer and Water Grant have been awarded to you in the amount of $500,000. A staff member from the Recovery Resilience ARP division will be in contact shortly to review the next steps. Congratulations, we look forward to working with the town to improve sewer and water infrastructure. And that's from Nathan Littman. And again, thank you to Legislator Corcoran for all his help on that. It helps too that he sits on that committee, so <laughs> that's pretty good. Um, the Empire State Development Grant Funds uh, dear Supervisor Corcoran, thank you for your application to the Empire State Development Grant Funds in the Mid-Hudson REDC. We are pleased to inform you that the Town of Marlboro has been recommended to award $50,000. In addition to this award letter, this grant will be formally offered in an initiative proposal that will outline funding requirements, distribution terms, minority and women-owned businesses, contracting goals, employment requirements, environmental and historic preservation review requirements, and other terms and conditions required by the EESD funding process. So see, there's a lot of paperwork that goes involved, even just for $50,000. Um, and again, this is from the uh, Empire State Development Granting, and that's from uh, Regional Director of the Mid-Hudson Region. And Seuss. This $50,000 is going towards, um, remember I was talking about the initiatives for uh, the, um, the um, uh, for Buttermilk Falls and the, the new uh, uh, big um, convention center they want to build. And gonna, this is for the studies that go into the road um, traffic and the pollution and things of that nature, environmental concerns. 
So when to do those studies, you got to have those studies to get other grants, right? So those studies are going to cost about two hundred thousand dollars. So we applied for a matching of a hundred, and we ended up getting fifty. So, but any money we get helps because that's going to help the project move along because it has to be done regardless. It's part of like the um, long, a short or long EAF form that's got to go in front of the planning board. So it's part of that. So it helps them fund it. Uh, this one is uh, from Chief Kokoza. <coughs> Dear Chief Kokoza, please accept this letter as my formal. Is this an old one? It is an old one that recently came. Yeah, I was going to say, okay. All right. Please accept this letter as my formal notice of resignation from the Marlboro Police Department. As I had stated previously, at this present time, I am not able to meet the dispatcher minimum availability criteria set forth to me in November of last year. I would have liked to stay on at the MPD as a dispatcher and to have possible assisted in the department <coughs> with areas such as records, property, room management. If at any time I can be of assistance in those areas of another type of position that you feel is good to fit, please feel free to contact me. The associations I've made during my employment at the Marble Police Department will truly be remembered for years to come. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to work at the Marble Police Department. I have enclosed my dispatcher badge number 13, and that's sincerely Kimberly A. McNamee. Jerry, you keep giving us these resignation letters. All right, that's all I got for correspondence. Any other public comments? Anything else? Okay, let's go to resolutions then. Resolution 92, uh, point and planning board member. Um, so we have uh, Mr. Clark is uh, resigning as of uh, January 1st, as you guys know. So we had did interviews. Actually, he's not. He's going to last day is December 31st, but um, so we did interviews and here's the recommendation by the interviewing committee. So Supervisor Cork proposes the following, whereas a vacancy has occurred on the town of Marlboro Planning Board, whereas the town clerk has posted an ad in the official newspaper seeking interested persons to fill the vacancy and whereas the interview committee of Councilman Couchy, Supervisor Corcoran, and I don't know why they don't have in there uh, Councilman Zambito recommended to the town board that Frederick Callis Sr. fill the vacancy for the calendar year of 2023. Now, therefore, it be resolved that Freddie Callis Sr. is hereby appointed to fill the vacated planning board seat effective January 1st, 2023 until December 31st, 2023. And again, just for the board and everybody out there, it's a one year term because Steve Clark's term would have ended at the end of 2023. So. Uh, Freddie would have to interview again with other applicants um, to get reappointed again for the following year. So this is a temporarily one-year position as of right now. And moves for its adoption. Was that the only interview you had? Or you had more? No. no, we had three, uh, three other interviews. Well, three other interviews? Two other interviews. Three, to three total. Okay. Council Member Yes. Council Yes. Council Yes. Yes. Supervisor yes. Thank you. Uh, resolution 93 to appoint a member of the town of Marlboro Planning Board. Again, this is a position that actually is up this year, and it's Bobby Tronsolitos, and he uh, asked that he continue to serve, and we have recommended that he still serve. So here is the resolution. Uh, resolution 93 to reappoint a member of the town of Marlboro Planning Board. Supervisor Corcoran proposes the following, whereas there is an open seat on the town of Marlboro Planning Board, whereas the town clerk has posted an ad in the official newspaper seeking interested persons to fill the vacancy, and whereas an interview committee of Supervisor Corcoran amended to be appointed by Bobby Tronsolito. Now, therefore, it be resolved that Bobby Tronsolito is hereby appointed to fill the planning board seat effective January 1st, 2023 until December 31st, 2027, and these are five-year terms, and it moves for its adoption. Yes. 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 Thank you, Bobby. 
Uh, resolution 94, to reappoint member of the Ethics Board. Again, Joan has served on the Ethics Board for quite a long time and asked to be reappointed, and here's our resolution. Resolution 94, to reappoint a member of the Ethics Board, Supervisor Quirker proposes the following, whereas there is a seat open to the Town of Marble Ethics Board, be it resolved that the following reappointment, Joan Delator, a Democrat term ending in 12 31 2025. And again, we mentioned their affiliation because our code states that there has to be so many Democrats, so many um, Republicans, and so it has to be a balanced mix. So Joan is one of the Democrats. And moves for its adoption. Yes. 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 Thank you, Joan. Resolution 95, reappoint member of the zoning board. And again, uh, Jeff and George uh, asked to be reappointed, and we are going to ask the board to reappoint them. So resolution 95, reappoint members of the zoning board. Supervisor Quirk imposes the following, whereas there are two open seats at the town of Marlboro zoning board. Be resolved that the following reappointed to the town of Marlboro zoning board. Jeff McKeel, term ending date of 12-31-27. George Solanovich, term ending date 12-31-2027. And moves for its adoption. Yes. 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 And thanks to Jeff and George. Okay, resolution 96 to transfer funds. Supervisor Cork proposes the following, whereas the town board needs to approve the transfer of funds. Be resolved that the following be transferred. Transfer $55,620.70 from the water cash account SW-0200 to water capital reserve account SW-0230.006. This is the amount that was collected this year for the water reserve account for future improvements. So this was one of the extras that was um, we implemented this year on our water bills for future improvements in our water district. And this, so this year we collected $55,620.70. And we have to move it into the right account and moves for its adoption. Yes. 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 Thank you. And we have a lot of resolutions because we're only having one meeting this year. So, resolution 97 to appoint a part time cleaner. Supervisor Corgan proposes the following. Where the town of Marble Milton train station is being rented often, and where is the town wishes to hire a cleaner for all the train needs, uh, the train station needs, and where is the town clerk has posted an ad in the official newspaper seeking interested persons to fill this vacancy, and where has we received one application? Be it resolved that Emily Spellman be appointed to part-time cleaner for the Milton train station effective immediately. And so, th you know, this, this is uh, something we actually haven't done. We haven't had a cleaner for the train station. So um, it came about because we rented the facility out and the person that rented out came right up to the clerk's office and complained that the place was disgusting um, and that they had to clean it and they had to do a lot of work. So. Uh, we put out an ad and we got this. I will be uh, uh, recusing myself from this vote, just so you know, because even though she's not a relative yet, uh, this person is engaged to my nephew, so I will not be voting on this. But I will ask the board uh, to move for its adoption. Councilman Yes. Councilman Sessa? Yes. Councilman Yes. Councilman Yes. Thank you. Uh, resolution 98 to transfer funds. Supervisor Corcoran proposes the following, whereas the town board needs to approve the transfer of funds. Be resolved that the following be transferred. Transfer funds from Marlboro Sewer Improvement Account ending in 9121 to the general fund account ending in 0166 in the amount of $61,249 for employee COVID bonus pay on a December 23rd payroll. And this is money that um, in the COVID money that we received from the federal government. Um, rules were changed that anybody that was working through COVID was able to get a so-called bonus. Um, and since we were able to get 
significant amount of funds from um, other sources. Uh, this board chose to um, give these out to our employees, so we have to transfer these funds. And moves for its adoption. Yes. 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 Resolution 99. See how many resolutions we did this year? Uh, to accept a donation to the town of Marlboro. Supervisor Corcoran proposes the following, and thank you, Councilman Couchy. Whereas Basic Corp made a $500 donation to the town of Marlboro employees' holiday, breakfast, and Christmas party. Whereas the donation policy adopted by the town board on October 10th, 2006, states all donations must be accepted by the town board. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the town board and the town of Marlboro hereby accepts said donation. Thank you again, Manny. And moves for its adoption. Councilman Yes. Councilman Yes. 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 All right. Resolution 100. To accept the road dedication of an addition to Chris Corner Road and authorities, the supervisor, to sign the consent to dedication. Um, this is with, for Nick, um, uh, our favorite guy, Nick um, Delella. And. Um, uh, going back and forth with our attorneys, and we got it all set for the meeting, and John Alonji, our highway superintendent, has signed off on this. He inspected it, and it's just um, a small little piece that is going to be donated to the town. Um, Supervisor Corcoran proposes the following, whereas the town board has received, received the dedication of and release as well as a highway superintendent's order pertaining to the dedication of the addition of Chris Corner Road. Now, therefore, it be resolved. One, the town board accept the road dedication of the addition to Chris Corner Road and authorizes the supervisor to sign the consent to dedication subject to the following conditions being fulfilled by December 12th, 2022, absent which the dedication shall be nullified. A, issuance of a title policy acceptance to the attorney of the town recording the deed of the road properly executed and recorded instruments as follows. Deed, portions of Chris Corner Road to the town of Marlboro, payment of any outstanding expenses to the town, deposit sums sufficient to cover costs, recording instruments in the clerk's county office. All those things that were received, I have them in my office. Upon fulfillment of all these conditions, the supervisor shall be authorized to sign the consent to the dedication. The dedication shall be effected December 12, 2022 in the event of the fulfillment of the conditions set forth in paragraph two and three here thereof. The foregone resolution was voted upon with all members of the council voting as follows. Supervisor Corcoran. Yes. Councilman Yes. Councilman Yes. And that, my fellow councilmen and board members, is 2022 in the books. So Eddie, I'm going to leave it to you. I'd like to make my final adjust, uh, adjournment for the year, 2022. Uh, all in favor? Yes. yes. Aye. Aye. Thank you again. Thank you, everybody. Have a happy holiday. Merry Christmas and a great holiday season. Thank you.